trust him to help them succeed. Oh, let's ride some horses, that look in their eyes. So saddle me up and let's go for a ride. Welcome to today's show, everybody. Okay, we're going to talk about the spooky horse. It's something a lot of us can relate to. It's something that we see. Maybe, maybe it's the most common thing that people struggle with as we travel from one one ocean to the other, holding clinics. <laughs> and there's there's why we chose this horse. This is a filly. A nine-year-old filly belongs to my sister-in-law. Horse rides really nice, but tends to carry that frame of mind. Okay, my approach to to the spookiness in these horses, once we understand why it's there, we can have a little better understanding, I think, of how we can approach it. Now, by God's design, this horse is supposed to be scared of everything that moves and makes noise. By our design, we want our horse, when they spook, to stand still. But if we look at it from their perspective of what is it I need to do if I get bothered? Typically my horse wants to leave. Now I've got this stick and string. We've got all kinds of things sitting over here that we're gonna use just to bring out this mentality for you guys to see. Now, as I start swinging this stick and string up here, you see how quick she just stopped her feet. I think most of us get stuck with the idea of when my horse gets spooked, I want them to stand still because I've seen horses like this carry this mentality of, of being spooky a long time and I've watched people handle them and in my opinion what I've seen people do more than anything is teach these horses how to do that but here's what I'm concerned about if I could get this horse to, to keep moving and show me that she could relax you watch I'm not doing anything with that lead rope but every time I pick this up she feels like she's got to stop. Maybe she's been trained to do that. Okay, what if I could get her where she could maintain that life to where I'd be saying something more of, could you learn to relax while you're going? See, if I think about riding down the trail, I don't really want my horse to stop every time he sees something that bothers him. What I want my horse to show me is that they can just relax and flow on down the trail and not be so bothered by whatever it was that, that made a little noise or moved. That mighty sparrow that flies out of that little bitty bush as we ride by it. I've never seen a sparrow attack a horse, but I've seen a lot of horses act as if they were going to. So just, just the stick and string, you see the difference in the mentality there specifically on this side as she's moving versus when I let her do this. If I stop her, we'll set her up over here for camera's sake, and I let her stay there and I swing this and I encourage her to stay there, here's what I might notice. As my horse is standing still, I might see places where I think she's really starting to relax, but yet I might miss some things for that reason, that the feet aren't moving. I've got a different horse in my hand, guys. As soon as my horse's feet start moving. So we've got these banners tied back here. We've got an empty forco tub there that we've got some rocks in. This empty feed sack. This wonderful little paddle that we use to sort cattle with. Something, again, I can move and make a lot of noise with. Now, you got to notice the expression in the horse just as, she, as she's standing there. Okay, she might keep her feet still. You see her flinch as this paddle comes up to her. Now, the nose is tipping a little bit away from me. i got to be careful that I don't let that, that nose get too far, especially if I'm going back here. Last thing I want to do is spin away from me and kick me. But watch this, if I get the feet moving, and while they're moving, I start waving this thing around, what I might find, 
See, I'm gonna have to work just to get her to move. She's got a mentality of wanting to stay put. Horses are designed to move quick, okay? They're designed to, to notice that noise and movement and then react to it real quick. So if I'm just asking my horse to stop on the trail every time he gets spooked and all I'm concerned about is what he's doing with his feet and not his mind, maybe I'm just setting that horse up to, to really get in a position to where when he says I can't handle it anymore, just be gone. I'm thinking, what if I could take this paddle with me? What if down the road or down the trail, so to speak, I could sit right up here and I could take this paddle with me and I could make all the noise and movement I could think of, not just while I'm sitting on her, but maybe while I'm loping some circles, okay? It's, I think sometimes we get wrapped up in, well, my horse, didn't spook because he stood still, okay? To me, whether or not my horse spooked isn't necessarily what the feet did, it's what the mind was thinking. And the concept of, for us, teaching our horse to spook in place, we'd rather see our horse learn to just continue that forward motion and relax walking on down the trail. I'm gonna give her a short break with that. We'll drag some more of this stuff out here, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. Riding horses each day is a horse lover's dream. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, we're talking about a spooky horse today. I was trying to get you guys to understand in the first segment of this episode the concept of it's not really about teaching my horse to spook standing still, okay? I want my horse to learn to relax. Here's gonna be my biggest motivator. I'm gonna get her moving this segment and we might keep her moving the whole time because what I'm thinking more than anything is my biggest motivator to get this horse to change is to put her to work, to get her feet busy, okay? If she's fresh, I'm telling you, if I would if I would approach my horses and think about if I could get them a little bit sweaty, I'm not trying to wear them out, but I wanna use the, the work or the effort that they put out to be my biggest motivator, that's what I'm looking for. And I'm not maybe just talking about my horses that tend to act real spooky about being sweaty underneath my saddle. I might be talking about seeing some sweat down this horse's neck as I just get her moving here. Here's what I'm thinking down the road. Could a teacher to lope relaxed with this stick and string in my hand, with this flag in my hand, whatever it might be. So if it's all about the timing of my release and what I'm looking for in my horse, you can see how she's pulling on me. You can see how she wants to tip her nose to the outside. You can see the expression in her face. And all I'm doing is swinging this rope. Okay, but I need to be thinking about what it is I'm after. See, to me, it looks like she relaxed right there when she stopped a little bit. But what about while she's moving? Now, I was pretty much taking a break there for myself so my right arm doesn't fall off. But I might have to find myself switching hands or whatever so I could stay here for a while if I need to try to find something in this horse that's trying to relax. I could benefit right here by not changing nothing. But swinging this stick and string until this horse could relax a little bit, what's going to help her? Repetition. She lopes around here for a little while. Now, I'm doing that for the sake of my arm but I'm not gonna let her rest. Just trying to get a little life back in my arm so I could swing it some more. Back to the lope. You guys see how tight she is. Pulling on me here. Now she broke down to a trot, so I'm just gonna rub her with this string and I'm gonna let her stop right here. Again, for my sake, my right arm's about to fall off. You guys are gonna have to prepare yourselves to, to go at it like that, where you might have to swing this for a while. The timing of what I'm trying to establish here is while she's going, we'll get her headed this way so I can use my left arm, is to try to find that spot 
while she's moving. If you guys can't see the change in this horse's expression from when she's standing still to when she's moving, this pin's a little bit slick, okay? She's slipping a little bit. That might be spooking her a little bit. But if I can't see that change in her expression from when she's standing still to when she's moving, then I'm missing the boat. I'm not truly watching my horse like I ought to be, okay? More people get bucked off their horse at a lope than they do at a walk or to stand still. If my horse gets spooked by something and can't learn to relax while they're moving, guys, I'm gonna have trouble riding that horse down the trail and really being safe. Now I'm letting her rest here because as she come around just a second ago from a lope, she slowed down to the trot on her own while I was swinging this stick and string. Whether it's the paddle, that feed sack over there, this flag, it doesn't matter what it is, guys. I'm after the same thing. And if I can, if I can get that frame of mind built or get it at least to start to show up a little bit with this stick and string, maybe this is all I need. Maybe we'll just come in here with this string and just be nice with it for a second. Let her flow past the camera here and we'll let her rest again. Okay, she hasn't loped very long, but she's already starting to get a little bit sweaty. This mare has the mentality to stay just a little bit alert, aware of all the things that are going on around her. The old time mentality of wet saddle blankets make good horses. The reason that helps is because when you allow your horse to work at something and you let them have their idea, if it's the stick and string waving up over the top of her and it bothers her and her idea is to go and react to it and you let her have that for a while and it turns into enough work, that's my biggest motivator. But think about how beneficial it could be if I could get her to where we could do all this stuff sitting on her, trotting, loping around and have even a better, more relaxed expression doing that than we have standing still. It'd make this horse a whole lot safer to, to go ride down the trail. I'm going to let her think about that for a little bit. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Riding horses each day is a horse lover's dream. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, third segment of this episode, we're talking about the spooky horse, this little buckskin mare. Doesn't take much to get her spooky. She's always alert. You can see now she looks pretty relaxed. She's moved around here enough during this filming to get a little bit sweaty. I'm telling you guys, the more this mare moves around, the more I allow her to move around as I bring stuff in to bring out that reaction in her, the, the better this horse is gonna get at softening that frame of mind, the more motivation she's gonna have to not just follow that reaction that God put there. I'm just gonna keep moving here with, with the same concept that we've been talking about. I want you guys to to really understand that if my horse gets spooked, they tend to want to go somewhere, okay? And as you add more life, your horse tends to spook easier. That's just God's sense of humor. If I can get my horse to relax while she's moving, me personally, I think of it like this. If I can get my horse to relax at a lope with all this stuff that bothers them, what I notice in them horses at everything slower than the lope, tends to be way softer than if I just focus on getting my horse to stand still while I bring something out and move and make noise. This flag. Again, I'm concerned about that. It moves quick. But I love to see this mare move around like that versus just this. Okay, you guys note the expression in this horse. This might be where I start, okay? I can come out here with this flag and I can move around her and I can be far enough away from her. I can get, get out here on the end of this lead rope, leave her over there so I'm not being too strong, too quick, and I can work my way up to her, letting her stand still. 
But the funny thing is, is we're traveling around doing all these clinics and we're dealing with horses that are somewhat like this one. They tend to stay alert to that noise and movement all the time. What I notice about those horses is they're not approached in a manner that asks that horse to turn loose and much of that like this while they're moving, while they're at a trot or at a lope. I think the lope's gonna benefit all of us more in the long run. It might take me a little while to get there. She's pretty relaxed there. We'll liven this flag up. I'll slide her a little bit more rope so she could lope a little bit easier. Now I'm closing in on these banners a little bit. She's scared of the banners. She's scared of the feed sack, the tub we've got tied over here. Just letting her get a little bit closer. All the while trying to tell myself this, it's the step she takes at a trot at a lope that turns this whole thing into work. That's gonna be the motivation for her to think different. Okay, I can't take this out of this horse. I can't take it out because I didn't put it in there. But what I can do is I can show them that if that's how you wanna respond, I can, I can let you respond like that. But what if I show you how much work it is when you do? We just threw some rocks in this Forco tub here. Now again, here she is standing still. Could be a good place to start. You'll, you notice I've shortened my lead rope up a little bit. On this side, she really wants to tip her nose over there to the left. You guys got to be aware of what this end's doing. Okay, I can't let that nose get over there very far or I just open the door to get kicked. So you guys see that expression right there? That's the one I'm looking for. But what did she tell you? Watch this again. This mare will prove this to you. If I get her stopped right here, see why she's standing still? It's not near as exaggerated as it is when she's moving. So now at the lope, she's really bothered. Just gonna pull her up here so I can talk to you guys. She's really bothered now that she gets to that speed with this bucket full of rocks. But I couldn't ask this horse to show you guys any better this concept right here. Once they get moving, Everything tends to change if they were alert to start with. Those instincts just got magnified. They show up so much easier. They tend to be stronger. So here's your scenario. I'm going to let her stop right there. Here's your scenario. You're riding down the trail and she gets spooked and she leaves that lope, okay? Problem is that whatever that was that spooked her might be following her, okay? So she just left a lope. Once she gets to the lope, however magnified it was at a walk, it just became more magnified at a lope, okay? So I have to be aware of that. Am I really teaching my horse to soften and relax and not be so spooky if I'm just asking them to relax standing still all the time? I'm gonna let her think about that for a little bit, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. Riding horses each day is a horse lover's dream. I think our tip for this week's episode needs to be the consistency factor of what it's gonna to take to get a horse like this to really turn loose of the train of thought that she's been in so long and find something that's gonna be a little softer, a little easier for us to deal with. Guys, it's not something I can approach once a week, twice a week, I'm, I'm looking at this horse and I'm thinking I need to find as much time as I can to help this horse and give her the opportunity to work at this. But in my mind, I'm thinking I need to do this so much I turn it into a habit. That's the only way I'm gonna overcome what God's put in there. Thank you all for tuning in to today's show. This, this idea of, of a spooky horse, I think it's something we can all relate to. I think it's something a lot of people struggle with. 
And I think it's the approach that they take that tends to keep that issue as a part of their, their relationship with their horse longer than it needs to. This horse gave us a great example today of the times where I would let her feet stop and I'd have the flag or the stick and the string or even this tub here with these rocks in it. When she was standing still, that exaggerated reaction of this horse getting bothered wasn't near as strong as it was once I got the feet moving. And I really think if you guys can think down the road as to what you really want from your horses, I don't want my horse to just stop and freeze on the trail and spook in place so he can look and, and really focus on that object that bothered him and really get prepared to launch like a rocket whichever direction. I want my horse to just walk right on by it, trot right on by it, possibly even lope right on by it. So my goal is as we introduce these horses to this concept of how do we, how do we overcome what, what God put in there is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get them to work, I'm going to put them to use and let that be my biggest motivation for my horse to change their train of thought. And I think working at the lope where you guys can see how she's sweaty right now. She's wanting to think a little bit different, but without that motivation, it's hard, guys. But it gets me so much closer to where I want to be when I'm riding down the trail. And if she did spook and leave it lope, I could help her soften right there at that speed and not have to get her feet stopped to get her back to that point where I need her in that frame of mind. If you guys tune in to next week's show, we've got a little filly that we're going to bring out. We're going to show you guys maybe some steps and, and what it looks like as we try to introduce her to the snaffle. She's been ridden a couple times. She's packed the snaffle around, but we really haven't picked up on it much. So we'll give you guys an idea what that introduction looks like. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in this week. Let's go ride some horses. Whoa, let's ride some horses, but remember they need a leader to trust in to help them succeed. Oh, let's ride some horses that look in their eyes. So saddle me up and let's go for a ride. Say goodbye to the folks, Patch. Good boy. <laughs>